side, and there's a ch Chili's on the right. Mm -hmm. The restaurant. Yeah. Coming soon to meet Mickey's Coliseum. Coach, we have everyone. And you, and you can on. actually see the video replay. Really? <laughs> they turn your mic on. I ain't got it. There you go. He said, I, don't, I can't turn it on. I can't work the magic from up here. It's good to see y'all out with us this evening. Uh, good to have everybody out with us this evening. We're going to have a good time. We've had a good time the last night that here, and we got an excellent preacher this scene and an excellent singing group again, and we're just going to have a great time and a good revival. Uh, there are a few announcements. If you're here with a child, one or two maybe, that's not uh, familiar with the bathrooms, and the nursery are to my left, and we do have attendance in the nursery. So if you need it and want to use the nursery, it's there. I don't know about Brother Ecky, but children don't bother me. I always say if they get louder, I get louder. <laughs> and, uh, and we keep right on going. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me one bit, but it's really good to have you all out this evening. Uh, all of you with us. Uh, if you're here and you're looking for another church, if you're looking visiting, you're looking for a, a home church, uh, you'll find the cards in the back of your pews. If you'll sign those cards, give us your name, phone number, and address. We'll visit you before the week's out or or the first of next week. We'd love to have you here at Wesley. Uh, come be a part of us uh, if you would, if you like. Uh, we've been singing each night a little song. You look in your, in your seats, you've got a paper there. Shall we have a great revival? Uh, so we're going to start with that this morning or this evening and we're going to sing it through twice. Shall we have a great revival? Let us stand. Can't sign up, go to our website, pirate1250.com. And, and we got the Ronald McDonald house. Uh, that's Ronald McDonald house. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you said the pirate thing. I don't know. Well, yeah, we called it the pirate in golf fight. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this evening for this opportunity to come together to show our love for you. We also want to take this opportunity, Lord, to, to through music, special music, through the word that will be brought to us this evening by the Reverend Ecky Lancaster, that hearts would be touched, that each heart in this room this evening, Lord, would be touched in a way that you and only you know it needs to be touched. We pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on those gathered here, Father. We pray for the outpouring of thy Spirit in this congregation. Lord, we just thank you for the blessings that's already been shed upon us for this the past week's days in this revival. And we just give you thanks in advance, Lord, for the blessings that we know we're going to see tonight, this year, at this revival. Uh, we just pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, before I forget it, I forgot something very important last night. And I want you to know they let me know about it too. So I've decided that tonight we're going to double up and take two offerings. No. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We're not going to take two offerings. But we are going to take an offering before I forget it tonight. Uh, I got wound up in the revival last night and the singing and got to enjoying all this. And you know what? I didn't even think about it, but I'm going to tell you something else. In all my years of preaching, and I tell every church this, I have never asked the church for a penny. You know what the church needs as well as I know. 
And I have never, nor will I ever, as long as I preach and live, ever ask the church from the pulpit for a penny. Not one penny. At this time, can the ushers come forward? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that we can come here in fellowship. And Lord, and just hope that this will be a great revival. And that we thank you for everything you do for us. And Lord, just bless these ties that we have received that they will be used for your work. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Remain standing if you would and take your hymnals and turn to page 3. 328, 328, we're going to sing it through twice. So if they will.
Good evening. Good evening. Wow, I sound loud. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. Well, it's been a while since we've been here to sing for y'all, and we certainly appreciate it. I'm getting wrapped right up in the cord. Y'all going to have a, good, have a lot of entertainment here in a minute. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, we're glad to sing for you. We're going to sing a few songs, and then our kids are going to come up and sing a song or two. Well, just one, I think, tonight. All right, very good. All right. This next song is kind of an old song. It's been around for a long time, and that's because I'm old. And uh, so I love the words of the song, though. A cripple starts walking, a blind man can see, a leper. Cleansed and a captive is set free. A woman is rejoicing, her son did not die, and all these things happen when Jesus passed by. When Jesus passed by, when Jesus passed by, gone were all the heartaches, no trouble and strife, just to reach out.
in the ranks of my sin unworthy without I was needy within but then the king became my savior now his riches are mine and I God's child when Jesus passed by when Jesus passed by when Jesus passed by going out of order I'm sorry that's bad about that sometimes I love this this is a new song for us so we learned just a little while ago but it's got such a great uh, message also and we really try to pick songs that have good messages and that's uh, that's what it ought to be about so we certainly appreciate the opportunity and we're gonna sing a kind of a fast one for a fat man to try to sing not the same <laughs>
folks said uh, when, when they came in a while ago, gracious sakes, are those your children? <laughs> I can tell you, paying the food bill, yeah, they're right. <laughs> they, They've been singing a little song with Gina, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great song. Once again, just the, the words of the song are so good. And, uh, we're going to let them sing. They, they're going to force me to play the guitar, and I'm not a very good guitar player, so... Just ignore the play. Let's see him sing, okay? <laughs> As Jennifer comes back up, we're going to let you know who we are real fast and get right on back to singing, uh, in case you didn't know. Emma and Wyatt are our two oldest children. Uh, they're fixing to turn 16 in just another month. Gracious, a month? Really? 16? Oh, my gracious. Well, we love kids so much, we started over. We've got a 20-month-old back in the nursery. <clears throat> And I tell everybody when we go somewhere, because I, I preach at a church in Alver Lighthouse Baptist in, in Belvoir, been there for eight and a half years, and Gina surprised me with that on the way to church one night. And I tell people all the time, look, don't tell me bad news or shocking news before I preach. <laughs> if you got something you need to tell me, just tell me afterwards. Let me, let me get through my message first, because I was really off my game that night. <laughs> and she said, I got something that might upset you, I need to tell you. It depends on what it is. You're going to be a daddy again. Well, that's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But it's, she's been a blessing. I tell you what, we have really, really enjoyed uh, having her around. They say it's going to keep us young. It's either going to keep me young or put me in the grave one. I don't know. But, <laughs> but uh, we really are excited and having a good time. But these are our oldest kids, Emma and White. And then y'all know Gina. I hope you remember her. And uh, she does a fantastic job. I, I've, I've thought so much her singing. I've kept her around for 21 years. And uh, she's just been a blessing to me. And this is her sister, Jennifer. And she's been a blessing also. So they sing the girls' parts. I sing whatever's left. And we just do it the best we can. So we're glad to be here to sing for you. I want my times. Okay. I was wondering if he lead with me at this point now. So we're going to try a cappella song for you real quick. I'm trying to watch my time. So I... I was going to check to see what time it was when I came up here, but I didn't, so we're just going to hush and sing. Hey. Mm -hmm. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. I feel it's hard. <laughs> I mean, I know the word you're saying. I'm sure you're saying he. <laughs> he. Oh, I, un I misunderstood he. 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 Is that right? Start it. We're filling in. All right, here we go. He leadeth me. Oh, oh blessed thought. Oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do. Where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand, he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be. His hand, He leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp Thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content, whatever lot I see, since tis Thy hand that leadeth me and when my task on earth is done when by thy grace the victory's won one even death's cold grave i will not flee since god through jordan leadeth me oh he He leadeth me, his faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me, for by his hand he leadeth me. Help us out with this one. I know everybody knows this song. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Joy shall never end. Hallelujah, bye and bye. 
I'm sorry, I had a flashback looking at Wyatt over here on the front. When they, would, when they were real small, we used to sing a whole lot. They'd sit on the front pew. Tell them what I taught you. The very first Bible verse I taught you. Behold, I come quickly. That's exactly right. <laughs> I taught them. I said, I'm going to sit you right there. Don't you move. I'm going to teach you a Bible verse. Behold, I come quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I just caught a glimpse of him. Bless his heart. I said, boy, if you move, so help me if you move, I'm coming. I don't care who's, th- I'm coming to get you. Behold, I come, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I digress, I apologize. Whew. I just had a flashback, that's the problem. Jennifer's going to sing our next song for us, and I think we're going to wrap it up with this one, that's all right. Is, is, that, is that the right time? I think it's right. This is, uh, this is a really, I don't know what your message is on tonight, but uh, it's got a really great message, unless you tell me otherwise. All right. Okay, very good. Uh, do what the, what the wife says do. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. But this, the words of this song are so true, and I think sometimes we, we get so hung up on, on this life way, way too much and forget that this is just temporary. And uh, I think we really, and I promise I'm not going to preach a message. I'll be quiet. But listen to the words of the song as she sings. That's all that matters to me. You look at me for I believe there are streets of gold But it's all right with me If there's nothing more than worn out gravel road And I know a mansion's waiting But a cabin suits me fine Just a place where I can rest my heavy load Oh, they say there is a river that flows beneath the throne And the surface there reflects that holy place Oh, I'm sure that all Jesus face of that fair city will never fade away it's a perfect land where night will never come but all the beauty I'll behold there it can't compare to how I'll feel when I hear my precious Lord Say well done Cause that's all that matters to me To bow my head and thank my blessed Savior on my knees On those peaceful hills of glory in His presence I will be to know I'm home that's all that matters to me thank you Thank y'all so much for that message and song this evening. We really do appreciate that. It uh, was very good.
Um, I'll tell you right now, I've already told our visiting preacher, I always take my watch off and put it on the pulpit when I start preaching. Then I also tell the congregation the only thing that means is I got a watch. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything else. It doesn't mean I'm watching the time. Just so we understand. If it gets wound up and the preaching's good, preach on, brother. We got Brother Eki Lancaster with us this evening up from the White Lake, White Lake area. Uh, retired elder of North Carolina Conference. He served as district superintendent in the Wimbledon and Elizabeth City districts. He's served as Pine Valley Methodist Church for 12 years, uh, Wesley's Chapel 14 years, Rockingham, four, I mean, and the list goes on what this fine gentleman has done. Uh, and we're lucky and blessed to have him here with us this evening. But just before I turn it over to him, I got one question. For all of you here last night, do you have your marble? Did you use it today? I found out the hospital nurses are a captive audience. <laughs> I had a port put in today. They can't leave the room. They got to listen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At this point, uh, Reverend Ike, if you'll come forward, turn it over to you. Well, now I got a question. You said these, your children were 16. Are they twins? Yes, sir. Well, they're really nice looking twins. Okay, you raised them wrong. <laughs> All right, and that watch deal, I was thinking. I asked the minister of music when I was in Wilmington one time. He's a great, great minister of music. I said, Reggie, what does all this mean when you're doing this? He said, about the same thing it means when you put your watch on the pulpit, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was preaching at the same church one time and uh, it was just the start of the Lenten season not the Lenten season, the Advent season and I said now when y'all go home this evening I want you to read the Christmas story as it's recorded in the second chapter of Acts God only knows why I said Acts and he probably laughed and my wife was sitting right here and it was, a, it was a service. We had another service afterwards. It was a middle service. And she said, <laughs> And I thought she said, I had just started preaching. I thought she said, It's late. So I said, So let's stand for the benediction. <laughs> you know, most people told me it's the best sermon I ever preached. <laughs> And then she come up and said, why did you say this thing? So I said, you said it was late. And she said, no, I said it was Luke. And she told me the mistake I had made. Which was the first time she told me the mistake I had made. Always, I got my family, some of them here tonight. I got my niece and her husband and her son. I got my wife and my oldest son with us tonight. I take Shirley, my wife, everywhere I go. Cause I just preach better when I know there's a sinner in the house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was thinking about when he told me to cut the mic and that they would control it from back there. It's on, isn't it? I just cut it on. Or all? Try it one. If the light's green, it's on, right? There's a V button. V button. Hit the button. Hit the button. Y'all just trying to show me. Y'all got all this nice equipment. Is it on now? All right, anyway, I, we had bought. Uh, I don't sing when the congregation. I don't sing one lick. I couldn't carry a note. You know, I told the same minister of music one time. I said, Reggie. Why don't you teach me how to sing? He said, it'd be easier for me to teach you how to walk on water. <laughs> we had, in a, having the first service in a new building, and we had bought a, a, such an elaborate sound system, it was smarter than anybody we had to operate it. 
So when the ushers came down to take up the offering, I like what you said about offering. Let me just say this. Churches don't have financial, don't have financial problems. They have spiritual problems. Amen. Amen. You ever, I've never seen a church, and I was on our board of stewardship for eight years in our conference. I've never seen a church with financial problems. I've seen churches with spiritual problems. With the spirits right. That's another sermon. Invite me back again. <laughs> anyway, the ushers came down, and when the, they come down to get the plate, they handed a note to another minister that was doing that, and he laughed. And then he walked over and handed it to the minister of music, and he laughed. And then he walked over and handed it to me. And it said, tell Eki not to sing. We don't know how to cut off his mic. <laughs> really makes you feel good just before you preach, doesn't it? But I know what time church is out. Church is over at 12 o'clock whether you quit preaching or not. You know, the only person that listens to a preacher after 12 o'clock is his wife. The reason she listens, so she can tell him when he should have stopped. You know? All right, I want to share with you tonight from John's Gospel, the 21st chapter. If you have your Bibles with you, I would like to look. And I'm going to read verses 15 through 17. I was in uh, Dallas, Texas, I guess. And Zane Holmes, the person who used to introduce uh, this Bible study that was so popular, we went to his church on Wednesday night, and it was packed. I mean, it was just packed. When Zane Holmes got up to preach, he said, they caught read it, announced the scripture, and he said, everybody hold up their Bible. Well, everybody in that church, there was about 20 preachers. We were at a meeting out there. They were the one of us that had a Bible. I started to hold up the song book and hope wave it like that. <laughs> then he said to uh, what do we, uh, he said, what do we do for our friends who didn't bring their Bible? Well, people come from the congregation as the Bible's open and handed it to us. So we have a Bible. I thought how sweet. And then he said, What do we say to our friends who didn't bring their Bible? And all those people turned around pointing their finger and said, next time bring your own Bible. <laughs> I told Shirley, if I ever went back, I'm going to take one of these pulpit Bibles so I can hold it up and see it. Listen to what the Scripture says. Begin to read with the 15th verse. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my sheep. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Be to God. Let us pray. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want you to get the picture of this Scripture. Three times Jesus says in the Scripture, told the disciples to go to Galilee and that He would be there after the resurrection. Simon and seven of the disciples are standing on the shore of Galilee. And finally, Simon Peter says, I'm going fishing. Then the evening, the others said, we'll go with you. And they got in the boat and they went out and they fished all night. You fish at night on the 
Sea of Galilee, not in the daytime. And they had fished all night and they had caught nothing. When they were coming back to shore the next morning, they noticed someone standing on the shore. They discussed who it was. You know the story. Finally, John said, That's Jesus. When Peter jumped in the water, you remember the story and went ashore. And Jesus said to them in the King James Version, He calls them children. Children, have you any meat? And they had to say no. And He said to them, cast on the other side and you'll find them. And they cast on the other side and they caught 153 big fish. And they were sitting break and they brought them up. And Jesus had prepared the fire of coal, bread. And He said, bring some of what you have that's important. And come and dine. They did. What do we do when life comes up empty? Sooner or later, all of us will have those moments when life is empty. What do we do? The first thing we do is tell Jesus, Lord, it's just empty. I have nothing to show. I don't know what happened. We know how to fish, but it didn't work out. And Jesus says to us, then cast on the right side, and you'll find there might be some of us here tonight that's at that point that we just need to tell Jesus. I was so impressed when I come into this church tonight and saw this long altar. If there's anything in a church that ought to have to be replaced often, it's these cushions. Because they ought to be wore out from people kneeling on it. This day and time that we live. Amen. Amen. And when they cast on the right side and obey Jesus, they, life was far better than they could ever imagine. Their kick was far greater. But then we come to this point. Jesus had satisfied their needs completely. Physical needs, their hunger. He looked at Simon Peter and he asked Simon that question. Simon, do you love me? Foster answered it, not. If Jesus is asking you right now, do you love me? What would you say? Well, Lord, I'm in church. I'm going to church tonight. My wife told me to keep it short because there's a storm coming up. And I told her, if the storm comes up, we'll just preach through it. Lord, I didn't mean that. Uh, anyway, you heard of preaching up a storm. I'm brag about this. Uh, Simon looked at Jesus, and I can imagine that everybody there was a little uncomfortable. Simon, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know all things. You know my love. Now listen to what he said first. Take care of my lambs. What are lambs? Aren't they young sheep? I think amen. So she's telling up the thing. Yeah, she got a sheep. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up and show it to everybody. Look at that. Uh, you know what? 
I like that because yes, Jesus cross. takes His sheep everywhere He goes. And she, and she has a cross on the bottom of her foot. What did she say? I didn't see that. Cross on the bottom of her foot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, bless your heart. Thank you for showing that. Thank you for bringing it. Take care of my sheep. If there's one thing the church needs to do today is take care of God's sheep. Amen. Amen. We're missing a whole generation of young people, yes, of teenagers right. in the church today. Shirley and I are working with the senior adults in the church that we are attending. And it's a church I preached at for 14 years. Somebody said to me, Eki, I can't imagine you and Shirley working with senior adults. You always work with youth. I said, they were youth when we were here. <laughs> 40 years ago. Anyway, we were coming back from a trip the other day. We had gone to Charlotte to the Billy Graham Museum. And uh, if you've never been, God knows it's worth the trip. It, it's unbelievable. Anyway, I was looking at that bus full of those senior adults. There's more senior adults in that church today than there are youth. That tells you something about what the church is doing. We have got, my friends, to take care of God's lambs and there's not going to be any sheep in the church. Amen. The two most important things in the North Carolina Conference, and I support the North Carolina Conference. I love our, everything about our church and all. But when they redid our conference level, but people, directors and all, they left out, they no longer have a director of youth ministry, and they no longer have a director of evangelism. Hello? You know, if you've got evangelism, you haven't got to worry about stewardship and all that other stuff. The Bible tells us to get people saved. That's right. You know, and to preach the gospel. And how long has it been in so many churches since you've seen somebody come forward and have a spiritual experience and give their heart to Jesus Christ and be saved at the altar of the church? In many churches today, they'll go a whole year without having someone join the church. Tim Reese, who was here Sunday night, who I love dearly like a child, He's already taken in 50 new members this year in his church. See, Tim, not smart enough to know that you can't do it. He's got a doctrine he knows about, you know. He's brilliant. I'll tell you something about him, though, you won't believe. His wife called me one night about 10, 10.30, and she said, I couldn't wait in the morning to call you. Tim begged me not to call you, but I couldn't wait. So, uh, she said, we are at Niagara Falls. Again, she said, and Tim just leaned over to me and asked me, wonder what time they cut the water off. <laughs> I said, honey, you ought to catch the bus home. I live right home. <laughs> First time Shirley and I met Tim, and I'm, I'm watching. First time we met Tim, we were at a meeting a district meeting, and I, I was going to be the speaker in the district superintendent's post on the city. She called me and asked me if I'd do the whole meeting. I told her I would. Anyway, when I got ready to speak, Shirley had gone back and introduced herself to Tim and Tina. They were not even married then. And his first appointment on the blading charge, and they were getting ready to get married. And anyway, when they sat down, Tim, Tim leaned over. Tina and said, don't say nothing about the speaker. I think it's her husband. <laughs> He's afraid that Tina was going to say something about my speaking and Shirley sitting there. Again, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He said, yes, Lord. You know all things. You know I love you. He said, take care of my sheep. Second time. First one, care for my lamb. Second, take care of my sheep. <coughs> Church today has got to take care of their sheep. 
We've got to nurture. We've got to practice what we claim. We, as a, in the Methodist Church, we say we have open hearts, open minds, and open doors. We've got to open the doors wide. We've got to open the doors wide. And the third thing he says, Simon, do you truly really love me? And Simon, it says, was bothered. I think, you know, Simon was a big mouth anyway. He said he'd never deny the Lord and he's all this and that and other. But it said he's bothered. I thought, you think Jesus weren't bothered when he went to the cross of all of us for our sins? And we deny him in so many ways. Okay? Simon said, You know, I love you. And then he said, Be my sheep. Let me tell you tonight, the sheep are hungry. The lambs have scored in. And we've got to do We are never too old to care for God's people. We are never too old, first of all, to pray. Someone said to me recently, talking about healing and the way we used to have healing service. And I said, well, you know, God had not got out of the healing business. The church has got out of the praying business. Amen. When you pray and lay hands and anointed people and pray for them and believe in your heart that God was going to touch you and going to heal you. I heard the story of a young preacher that went in the hospital the morning and the lady was going to be operated on. He laid his hands on him and he prayed God to heal him. He got through praying, and she said, You might feel great. I don't hurt anymore. I feel good. And the doctor came in and said, I don't find anything wrong with you. You don't have to have surgery. And the young preacher walked outside and looked at him and said, Don't you ever do that. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> it would scare some of us to death if God would heal somebody in front of us. Amen. Amen. God's still in the healing business. Right, right. And we need to get in the praying business. Right, yeah. And I mean really praying. The second thing, <coughs> we are never too old to have faith. By faith, by faith you're saved through grace. That's the will of God for our life. And we need today to step out more faith in the church. Not wait. You know, it's like building and doing things in the church today. We want everything so financially sound. You're going to build, go out there and start digging. Trust God. Trust God. We're never too old. We're never too old. And we are never too old to witness for Jesus Christ. Right. I would just ask you tonight, if you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, if you really love Jesus, how long has it been since you told somebody about it? I was thinking, and I, I think constantly, I've never been a politician. Somebody asked me one time, Says, you're a Democrat or a Republican? And I said, no, I'm a Methodist and a Christian. <laughs> I don't think I'd be either one of those things. <laughs> There's a lot of talk today. But if we would talk as much about Jesus Christ from now to November as we'll talk about those nuts that are running, <laughs> what a difference it would be. <laughs> it's like a three ring circle. One of them can tell you anything good about themselves. They got to tell you something bad about somebody else. But it is. It's like you know. I was saying to my dad tonight. It reminded me of a, a, a group of uh, maybe fifth or sixth graders out on the playground arguing over who's going to bat first. And for this decide who's going to bat first, it's time to go in for recess. You miss the whole game. You know. It's time that we witness and stand up. For Jesus Christ. Right. You know, uh, you can ask somebody, are you a Duke fan or a Carolina fan? And they'll fight you because you don't know. 
I mean, they can tell you, yes, sir, I'm a Carolina fan. Uh, you know, you're a Carolina fan, sir? Who probably say any more you did, I call it. But you know, and they'll act like they get getting mad because you don't already know. You can say you're Democrat or Republican, and they can get mad. I was in the barbershop yesterday getting a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a boy next chair to me, and he was talking about what he was. And I thought, if I didn't have this thing around my neck and tied in here, and that man got a razor on my ear, I'd just get up and walk out. You know? <laughs> I didn't come here to hear all that junk. Talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Talk about Jesus. Finally, go ahead and say amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Finally, we're never too old to pray. We're never too old to have faith. We're never too old to witness. And we're never too old to love. <coughs> there years ago, there was a song, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. That's the one thing there's not enough of. That's what we need today in our world. Is more love. Amen. And before we have more love in our nation, we've got to have more love in our church. Amen. And before we have more love in the church, it's got to start in our <coughs> We've got to get back to love in people. What would you tell Jesus tonight? Church, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you love me. We'll do something about it. Church, do you really love me? Yes, Lord, you know we love you. We pay our benevolence. We keep the church looking the way. We feed my sheep. <coughs> Church, do you really love you? Yes, Lord, you know we love you. Then why don't you invite your neighbors to come in? Why don't you tell your children that you love them? Charlie and I had a little restaurant for the last 20 years. I began to listen to I, I bought it and bought it. Uh, so our grandchildren to have somewhere to work while they were in high school. And the last one graduated on Saturday and surely sold the rest of them. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to sell it. But she said, well, that's just a God thing that somebody come in on Monday after him graduating on Saturday to buy. That's just a God thing. I said, well, I sure can't argue with God and his daughter. <laughs> but you know, if we love God, we're going to do something about it. That's right. We're going to do something about it. My invitation to you tonight is this. Ask yourself, how could I answer that question? Jesus was here tonight and say, Do you really love me? What proof would you show? As we stand and sing our closing hymn, or however you're going to close it, I would invite you tonight, if you feel that of the Lord, you come here to honor and tell Him to love you. Think about what you want to do about What you want to do about God bless you and you come let us stand. We sing. I came at days of 12 at this altar. Amen. It works, don't it? It works. Amen. It works. I also quit my job in engineering. How many years ago, Bet? 15, 16? My boss man wanted to say, how are you going to make a living preaching? <laughs> I've lived brother now than I did when I was making a lot of money in engineering. <laughs> the Lord's Amen. been good to me. 
The Lord's been good to you. Try. God's not going to call you to go anywhere. He won't go with you. You test the Lord. That's right. You test the Lord. I tell you what, yeah. you, can, you can't outgive Him. You can't outdo Him. You can't outlive Him. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to sing that old familiar hymn that I came to the altar under, 357, Just As I Am. If you come to the altar and you have need to one of either Brother Icky or myself praying with you, if you'll raise your hand to signify, we'll come pray with you. If you just want to come pray to the Lord and uh, on your own, then we, we, that's, that's fine too. Um, 300, oh, and tomorrow night, I'm about to forget this. Tomorrow night we have uh, Reverend Eddie Hill and uh, we have uh, the Hart Family Gospel Group. So come back tomorrow night and bring your friends. And as one of our members here always says, and bring your enemies too. Maybe they'll become your friends. Eddie you Hill's a great preacher. Y'all love him today. We've been blessed this week by all of you. Yeah. By you, Brother Icky, and all the other ones that's come. <coughs> I'm looking to page number 357. Yeah, 357. forth in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.